What's going on Pixel Hackers? Christian Loversich from Pixel Fit here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to handle customer service when it comes to your drop shipping store with Shopify. But before we get started, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive right in. All right, so first, I'm gonna give you the three must-haves for your store to avoid a lot of headaches. Number two, I'm gonna give you some scenarios and how I personally handle them so I can get the customers to come back and save them from doing refunds. And number three, I'm gonna give you the apps that I use to keep everything organized and keep the ball rolling on everything to avoid headaches. All right, so number one, the first three must-haves in your store. Number one is you want your refund and exchange policy in your store. You want it right at the top. Don't hide it on the footer. Don't hide it, make it clear. This is, this is our refund and exchange policy and you explain what that is, whether it's 30 days, 60 days, 45 days, 15 days, I don't care what it is, but you make it clear. Only items that have not been used, washed, damaged, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, we will exchange them or return them. I highly recommend that you do refund and exchanges. There's no reason why to play the game of wants. There's no refunds. That's only going to piss people off. And that's just another headache. It's not worth, if you know what you're doing and you're turning your store into a brand eventually, which is what you should be doing in the first place, you need to offer refund and exchanges. Here's a fun fact. In an average uh, retail store, the return exchange rate is 6%. So you want to keep it there or lower and you're in good standing. Okay. Number two. The second thing that you must do in your Shopify store is have the shipping policy along with tracking, with a tracking app, okay? I like Aftership, that's one of my favorites. Half the shipping times. Don't be afraid to tell them how long it's gonna take for that, for that item to get to them. I don't care if it's five days, 10 days, 15 days, 30 days, whatever it is. You have to let them know up front. This is going to get rid of a lot of headaches up front. And then once they ship, they're going to be informed about it, which brings me to number three. You want to have a post purchase email sequence that goes out as soon as they buy that product and it keeps them informed of what's going on with their purchase. What do I mean by that? I don't care if you have to tell them that the product is being made. You got it. This is when your marketing skills have to come in and you have to craft a story around your brand and around your product. So walking through the journey, hey, your garment is being made. Now it's being moved to this department. It's moving to that department. This is, you know, keep them informed. They basically, customers just want to know they're not being scammed. That's what it is. They want to know they're being scammed. So if you keep them informed what's going on with their order or the process of where the order's at, like I don't care if it's like your order's being processed three days later, your order has been processed. Now it has been moved to the shipping department. They just want updates to make sure they're not being scammed. So you set up your post-purchase email sequence with something like Clavio. I use Clavio and that keeps them informed and that's get, get, that gets rid of a lot of headaches. So there's that. That's the three main things you got to have right away. Okay. The scenarios. Okay, scenarios. So rule number one, first of all, you have to be obsessed with customer service. Customers are the ones making you money. Without customers, you are nothing. And you have to obsess about this. This is why Amazon is so, so successful because that was rule number one with Jeff Bezos when he launched that company. He's all about customer service and there's a reason for that. That's why he makes a lot of money, okay? Number one, when you get a support Email, when somebody emails you or sends you a chat, a DM, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, whatever, you must respond to that in 24 hours or less. The average respond time in my stores is less than an hour. Less than an hour. You respond right away. So respond right away. Okay? When you do that, the second thing you got to do is... Do not take it personal. Listen, truth of the matter is some people are very, very miserable out there. You don't know what's going on in their lives and they're gonna take it out on you. They're gonna take it out in your store because of whatever reason, X, don't take it personal. It's just an email. You don't even need a phone number. It's just an email. Just read it and respond accordingly to it. 
What do I mean by that? Don't get an attitude. That's why you're gonna have to take it personal. It's business and you keep it as business. Take it from someone who's, dude, I'm half Italian, half Venezuelan. Like I'm so emotional. I react emotionally for so long in my life and I, I used to get angry very easily and it's something that I had to work still to this day. So I get it. Do not take it personal. I get that you work hard in your store, but don't take it personal. The third thing you wanna do when you respond to those emails is that the opening line in your email should always be, hey, so-and-so, the first name, thank you for your email or thank you for your message, thank you for contacting us, right? So you thank them right away. That brings the defenses down right away. You're thanking them, right? It's a nice compliment. We all like to be complimented. So thank you for whatever. And then, comma, the next thing you should be saying is, I truly apologize about the inconvenience or sorry about the inconvenience or sorry for X. Sorry that you're not happy with our product. Sorry that our product is not up to your quality standards. See what I'm saying? You're apologizing right away. So when you, apologize, when you thank them and apologize right away, that diffuses the whole situation. I don't care how much of a bad mood you are, they're gonna chill. I'm gonna tell you, try it. They're gonna chill right away. So that's the first two things you're gonna do. So, uh, apologize and thank, um, and thank them or thank them and apologize. I got it mixed up. You guys, you guys heard it. All right. So now that we got that part out of the way, that's how you're going to open your answer right away. Okay. So here's the different scenarios that you're going to get. Number one, one of the most common ones is I didn't get my tracking or where's my package. Okay. So something like that, all you have to do is say something like, hey, so-and-so, thank you for sending us a match. I apologize about the inconvenience. Uh, we usually send our tracking information after the purchase, but it seems like maybe you didn't receive it, question mark. Here's your tracking information and you link the tracking to the page on your website. So now they can pull up the tracking and they can see exactly where the package is at. Okay, there's two things about this. The reason why you wanna keep the tracking in your, in your uh, website on your Shopify store is because you can actually also build an audience out of anybody who lands on the tracking page. So in the future, if you, if you wanna exclude people who check their tracking a million times a day so you don't deal with those type of customer service nightmares, you can actually exclude them when you build new audiences. So that's another thing to keep in mind, right? So you wanna do that. Uh, the, other, um, the other thing that uh, people are gonna complain about is, here, let me open uh, a new one. So tracking, send them to page. Another scenario for tracking, it's gonna be, oops, get rid of that, get out of there. All right, another scenario for tracking is gonna be, maybe you don't have the tracking in the US yet and it's still, you're using 17 track or something like that because it's still in China and let's say, you know, you don't wanna, you don't want to show them that it's been in China for a week or whatever. So what you can do is you can go to 17 track and just take a screenshot where it says it has been delivered to your warehouse, whatever the warehouse in the US, New York, uh, California, Florida, whatever. So just take a screenshot and just place it on the email. Hey, here's, uh, here's where the packages are at. And half 99% of the time that's going to get rid of that person. Okay. Another scenario is going to be that's package late where it's at, it gets rid of that. Okay. Another scenario is going to be package lost. Again, hi customer X. Thank you for contacting us. I'm so sorry about the inconvenience and I apologize about the situation, but unfortunately this is something that is completely out of our control. So this is what I can do for you. I can either offer you I, I, can, uh, I can contact uh, the local carrier and I can have it rerouted back to you right away or I can reroute it back to us and issue you a refund. What would you like us to do for you today? And I'm gonna tell you right now, 99% of people are gonna ask you to resend the package to them, okay? So, they're gonna do that. They're gonna ask you to resend it to them. It's gonna be all good and great, okay? Let's say, uh, that it got lost and they can't find it. So at that point you tell them, hey, hi customer X, thank you for your email, I truly apologize for the inconvenience, but it seems like your package got lost in transit. 
Unfortunately, it's something that it is completely out of our controls. So these are the options that I have for you. I can either re resend, uh, uh, send you a replacement right away, make sure I personally track it to make sure it gets to you as fast as possible. Or number two, I can offer you a refund. If you do happen to take the replacement, I'll be more than happy to offer you an extra 25% uh, off your next entire order for the inconvenience on top of it or whatever. You guys get the idea. I mean, usually I write it a lot better than that, but that's basically the message. So I offer them a 25% discount on top of replacement. What does that do? Well, that gets rid of the refund 99% of the time, right? It gets it's going to get rid of the refund. So now, not only are you getting rid of the refund, so you're not losing money, but now they're going to come back and buy something else for you with a discount, and it's a it's basically a freebie because you're it's not it's not money that you spend running ads. So you're making the customer happy, and they're coming back and buying more from you. See, it's all human psychology. All right. So uh, refund. Now the third part, high handle the process that I have in place for refund and exchanges. Okay, so I have two apps um, that I use to keep track of everything. And one is called uh, Rich Commerce, and I'll put the link in the description. I'm not even an affiliate link, I just like using them. Rich Commerce. Okay, and the second app that I use is called Shippo. Okay, Rich Commerce is an app that you can actually go in there and I think it starts like it's free for 14 days or something like that and then it's like it starts at 9.99 and then it goes up from that depending on how much you're using it. So basically what it does is you can actually set it up where if somebody emails you, hey, I just wanna do, I ordered the wrong size or my thing is defective or whatever. Once again, you start an email, hey X, thank you for sending it, thank you for your message. I really, uh, Thank you for your message. I truly apologize about the inconvenience because of blah X or blah, 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 blah. But don't worry, we'll take care of it right away for you. All I need you to do is follow this link below and we'll get you squared right away. And then you have a link that Rich Commerce makes for you. And then what it does is it sends them to a portal where they will put the order number and their email address. And then you can have it to choose uh, multiple options of, of replacement, exchange, refund, different size, of different product it's all automated so when you do that it's also gonna you can make it so they have to upload a picture of the product so now when you log in into your dashboard you're gonna get a notification that there was an exchange or, re or return when a uh, returned uh, number made you can go in there and you can actually see a picture of the product and people do it they don't complain at all about it so now you know that they're not lying to you and you know it's it's you can see that the products not defective so once I see that, you can actually go in there on, uh, on Rich Commerce and you have the options to set as approved, pending, resolved, or whatever. So you, put a, you change it to approved, right? And then you go to Shippo, and Shippo basically is just labels. They make labels for you. It's an easy way to get labels made, uh, prepaid labels from uh, USPS or whatever. So you go to Shippo, you create a prepaid label. I mean, the most you're gonna pay from one side of the country to the other, it's like $2, $3, depending on the product. If it's, a, if it's like clothing, if it's something a little bit heavier, it might be a little bit more, but it's not much. So I personally always offer prepaid labels and then you upload the prepaid label to the, to the, uh, to the ticket. And when you hit approved, it sends the prepaid label to the person. And all they have to do is just repackage the item, throw that prepaid label on you and then send it back to you, whatever you want them to send back to. So now, you just made the customer experience a hundred times better because there's no questions asked. You do want us what they're asking for and then you just send them a replacement and that's it. So that's how you can keep track of all the tickets that are open too. So if you start growing your brand and you have multiple people, multiple VAs handling all your returns and exchanges and you have a huge store, they can log into the dashboard and they can see exactly what's going on on each order and you can actually put notes. You can write notes of what's going on which, which, uh, with each order. Like so-and-so order, uh, talk to the customer, this was the problem, make sure quality is good, it was the wrong color, please, you know, you can make the notes for your, all, all your team on there. So. That's how I handle customer service. That's how you should be handling customer service because customers are the life, the lifeblood of your business. So 
Guys, if you learned anything from this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Help support the channel. And if you want to keep learning about Facebook ads or drop shipping, Shopify, whatever, or just marketing in general, make sure to watch one of the videos right above me. Keep watching, keep improving on yourself. And I'll see you guys in the next video.